Hey guys, I'm really excited to be talking to you today because I found a solution to the color problems that I was having in Photoshop. This is really great. I'm, I'm really excited because this really changes everything. So uh, this is a video response to a previous video I made about where Photoshop fails. And um, this isn't perfectly perfect, but it sure makes a heck of a lot of difference. So I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So you can watch the first video where I talk about uh, hue, saturation, and brightness, and why they're so um, pretty much so insufficient to describe color the way people see them, and why brightness isn't really the same thing as lightness. Um, and that leads me back to the lab color mode in Photoshop, which works really well. Um, one of the things that I have always wanted to be able to do is to be able to use the LAB color mode to choose a value first and then choose a color from within that value. Um, if you have the color panel here in Photoshop, you can set it up to use lab sliders, which I have done. So you can use L to, let's say, pick, you want to have L at 50%, so you want the same lightness as 50% gray, but the problem ends up being how do you choose which hue you want when things start moving all over the place. You've got A which goes between green and magenta and then B which goes between blue and yellow. So it can be a little bit hairy to choose just what color you want when you're moving these sliders around. Like do I want more blue but but more of this blue until it's extra blue or do I want slightly less blue and then slightly more green. It's, it, it's not a color wheel that I'm, I'm used to and unfortunately you can't lock this down and then use this ramp down below to pick which hue you want. So here's the problem. When you open up the Photoshop color picker you can, you can um, use this lab slider here so you can make things brighter or darker but the thing that I didn't totally understand is that normally, natively, Photoshop um, will let you move this L slider all the way up to the top, but this cyan up here at the top, which it's calling a lightness of 100, is not really a lightness of 100. Pretty much the only thing with a lightness of 100 is white. And because of that, it's throwing a little error box here to say this color is not actually in the gamut. It doesn't really have these properties. The closest thing to it is this kind of um, darker cyan. So you can move this slider all the way up but all of a sudden it stops being accurate and it's kind of annoying. Like if I want my L to be correct then I want my L to be correct. So I've been trying to figure out a way to get Photoshop to do this correctly and for a while I was going up here to the view and I noticed that gamut warning has always been checked. I've always been accustomed to the idea that let's say let's say you're in CMYK you're gonna do something for print and you paint with a color that can't be printed in that scenario it's possible to to use gamut warning to show you when the colors are out of gamut. It's actually not even working correctly right now. I'm not doing the right thing to make it show up. But what I really wanted was for it to show up in the color picker. But for some reason, Photoshop has decided, go back to RGB, that you need to tell it to do gamut warning separately while you're in the color picker. So you have to first launch the color picker, then go to view, and then gamut warning. And all of a sudden, what happens, like magic, is that now this slider actually correctly represents the gamut. You put L up to 100, guess what? The only thing you can pick is white. And maybe, you know, something with a tiny little bit of off-white shade, you can cheat a little bit. You want 50% gray? Sure, you can have 50% lightness. These are the only colors that exist in there. And what's even more incredible is that as you use the mouse around here to select these different hues, the slider on the right will um, update to reflect 
what lightnesses can exist for that hue and that level of saturation. So let's say I'm going to pick this very saturated red. The only lightnesses that that can exist at are represented in this little narrow band in the, uh, in the slider here. This is perfect. It's everything I ever wanted, and it's in Photoshop um, right where it was originally supposed to be. I just didn't know where to find it. Or, for example, let's say here's like a kind of a neutral bluish gray. This one has a very wide range of lightnesses that it can be from a kind of light to almost black. And then it kind of bottoms out at the very bottom of the lightness scale. So as you move the slider around and then as you click within the slice of the gamut of the color space that you're in, the slider gives you almost all the information you'd ever need to know. You've got all your hues here. You've got your saturation, which is um, described by proximity to the center. So as you get closer in, in lab mode, as you get closer to the center, things become more neutral. And as you get further out, they become more saturated, just like a color wheel. And as you move up in lightness, the slice of the color space that you're seeing changes to reflect what is possible at that level of lightness. It's exactly what you'd want it to be. So I'm completely thrilled. This is everything that I needed, and it's right here in Photoshop. Um, so I highly recommend that you set this up and get this working because this is what you really need as a painter so that you can um, choose your, your colors first based on, on value, which L works very well for, then based on hue, and then based on saturation. And this actually lets you do this, so I'm very excited. And just remember, you have to, even if you go up here, and even if gamut warning is already selected, it won't show up in the color picker unless you launch the color picker and make it there too. You need to do it twice. I don't know why they make this the default, but you have to do it twice. So once you do, enjoy, paint, and uh, let me know how it works out. Thanks for watching.